chapter 55 of the A Traveling Knitter podcast. I'm your host, Seth, and I'm podcasting to you from Dayton, Ohio, inside of my craft room, maybe for the last time. I'm not totally sure. I had every intention of podcasting twice in February, but it just, it ended up not happening. It's Last weekend ended up being very busy. <sighs> My work weeks have just been very busy and yeah, I don't feel like I need to make excuses for it. It just didn't happen. But I'm here now podcasting and it is Sunday. Tomorrow is Monday, back to work. But I, this is my last month in Dayton. Feels weird. I've, I've been here since I graduated college. So it's a, it's kind of a weird feeling. But let's, let's just jump into the podcast, shall we? So I do have some completed objects or completed quests. And one of them is this guy. So these are my Gladys socks. This, the pattern is by General Hogbuffer. They are free on Ravelry. And these were part of my Make 9 of 2019. And the last time I showed these on the podcast, I was on the heel of the foot. So here's my progress keeper. And then I finished it. And I did have enough yarn. I have maybe two grams left. So it it worked out perfectly. The socks are a tad loose. Well, not a tad, they are loose. And I, I'm, I'm okay with that. I'm happy with them. I kind of expected them to be bigger, but um, I really like them. I'm still just not the biggest fan of Knit Picks Hawthorne. It's just, it's not soft yarn, but I do love the toes. So yeah, this is Knit Picks Hawthorne speckle in the city lights I think and then the toes are a uh, a mini skein from I wrote down Woolberry for some reason there it's not Woolberry it's once upon a corgi now I'm thinking back have I been saying Woolberry the entire time for my other podcasts? Hopefully not. But these are from Once Upon a Corgi and it was the one of the minis in my 2020 advent calendar. I love the mini. There are some green speckles that match the green in the sock but then the rest are blues and the green blends with the blue to make almost like a brownish color. It's it's deep, but a lot of colors. And I don't know if you can see it on camera this time. But what I will do is take the stitch marker off and I'll show those up close for you. 
So it is a a wing and it is from the Accord of Thorns and Roses. Well that's what the minis are from is the Accord of Thorns and Roses mini skein set. So the stitch marker goes with it. And I will just put those right next to me. I do have another completed object and that is this hat and the ends are woven in. I was a beast with ends last weekend. I wove in all the ends on all the hats that I had that I'm donating. I was, I was at least 10 that I did. And then I was weaving in ends on just random things that I had. So this is a waffle hat and the pattern is by a Gale Babble. It is free on Ravelry. And the yarn that I used is impeccable in the true gray colorway. And it did not use a ton. I have, I have a blob of it. I would say one skein of impeccable would probably make three to four of these hats. So another hat in the donation bin. I've been keeping track of the hats in this notebook. Gotta get to the page. So in January, I made a total of six. And in February, I made a total of one. So um, I've got seven hats and that puts me behind. Oh well. Those are my completed quests, so let's just move on to current quests. And since we're talking about the donation hats, I'll just pull out um, the latest one that I've been working on. Same pattern. So this will be another waffle hat. And it's in this green color, I think. Pretty sure this is a Vanna's Choice. Yeah, so this is a Vanna's Choice, which is a thicker yarn um, than the Impeccable. This is definitely a worsted. So I did the ribbing and I am just starting the hat portion. So I had every intention of finishing this in February, but I didn't. So that means I do need to pick it up, pick up the pace in March. And I need to actually donate a batch. I was on the internet for maybe 20 minutes just searching and why is it so hard to find places to donate things? Like I, I mean I find Goodwill and Salvation Army and then I find random uh, organizations that are to a specific area like New York City. <clears throat> but I really struggled to find it for Dayton, so that was kind of sad. I might shoot out some feelers to my knitting group just to see if they have an idea of where I can donate it because I, I definitely wanted to go to, <clears throat> I wanted to go to like homeless uh, people essentially. So yeah, that is that and I have this much. It should be enough to make a hat and hopefully I have some left over and then I can do um, this color in the brim and then maybe, because this is going to make another hat and then finish it up. I don't know, but yeah. So I've been keeping all of that inside of this large tote, which I got from um, my friend when I was in her wedding. And I've been keeping, I was using a market basket but it was just too small to hold all the random yarn that I wanted to carry around. So it's in this bag. This bag doesn't typically go anywhere with me, but it's got some very sturdy handles. Um, I believe she said she got it from Five Below and then um, got someone to embroider our, our first initials on it. I really like it. I'm a, I'm a big fan of this. This is great. 
the there are a lot of works in progress because I have been dabbling here and there with all of them but the next one is my weekender yep I worked on it and I made progress on it that you can actually see so we have a body of a sweater and we have shoulders and we have a neckline that's right so let's just let me just put it on oh do you guys like my shirt I th may have worn this on the podcast before I work out because I really love breakfast second breakfast 11 Z's luncheon afternoon tea dinner and supper That's a Lord of the Rings reference. And there it is. It's, well, I can't really show you, but um, it hits me without blocking right, hmm. It's below my hip bone, but it's shorter than I thought it would be. So I'm gonna be blocking this because I want this to be longer and it is pretty I think it'll block out fine so here's the neck and then three needle bind off the shoulders so you have this exposed seam and here's your front slip stitches the back is going to look very similar to the front and it does have a split hem and it's slight it's only slightly longer in the back and the next time I do a split hem like I think it's only supposed to be half an inch longer but the next time I do a split hem, I'm definitely going to make the back longer because I do prefer that. So that is my weekender and I might as well just keep it on for the rest of the podcast. It does look, it does look really nice and it's really soft too. So all I have to do is weave in the ends. I have actually already woven in some of the ends. I just need to snip them off. And I need to knit the sleeves, which should go by really fast because knitting this has been very fast. Even though it seems like it's taken me a long time, I just I haven't been knitting on it often. So really this should have been, this could have been done if I wasn't doing anything. But yeah, just gotta, do the sleeves and uh, so hopefully next podcast that will be done I always say that and then I just don't touch it so maybe I should just not promise or set that goal or expectation um, the yarn that I'm using here's what I have left on the two balls that I've been using but I have two of each in knit picks stroll tweed and the flagstone heather and the down heather, so light gray, medium gray. Two, uh, so a total of four more skeins of that, but really I hold them double, so I have two, and then just a smidge of this. I'm gonna have leftovers. Um, yeah, definitely. Cause I will, I mean, I'll cast on with this and I'll probably get a good bit down the sleeve with this so I think I might even have a whole two skeins when I'm done which would be nice because I will use these to knit socks oh I have a little tape measure in here it's a little snail so cute and this is in my Daisy Girl and Company bag the Peter Pan one that I love so much. Um, did I say that's by Andrea Mowry? 
I feel like everyone knows that. Speaking of Andrea Mowry, inside of my amazing bird bag, I have the Boho Blush, which has gotten a lot of work done. So down there where my charm is, is where I was at, and I have knit all of this. So this has been typically my TV knitting. Um, I am still on my first skein, and, in, and with the pattern, I am on the seventh section. And there is a total of 11 sections plus the, um, I wanted to call them streamers, plus the, plus the tassels. I'm worried that this is going to be a really small shawl because of the yarn that I'm using. This is a light fingering. It's lighter than, than normal. There's more yardage in the 100 grams. So I'm worried that this is going to be shorter. And honestly, what I will just end up doing is adding a whole nother three or four repeats to the pattern. Because so you've got, uh, so there is garter, brioche, garter, lace, garter, brioche, garter, lace. So I might do um because what what would it end up end, ending on so it would do um brioche i think yeah so it's gonna end on garter brioche garter so if i that would be i mean that would be a considerable amount more that i would have to knit and a lot more math i would have to figure out but it wouldn't be too hard We'll have to see once I get to that point and kind of block it out if I think it'll be necessary. The yarn that I'm using is the Cozy Color Works. It's hand dyed superwash merino. It's about 550 yards fingering weight in the color brick. I love this because it reminds me of the pattern. Um, like what the sample is knit in. It's similar vibes. Um, the flex that it has remind me of tweed. So it isn't actual, it is not tweed yarn, but it has that reminiscent, reminiscence of it. So the next section that I'm about to start is the garter section. So that is very easy and definitely good TV knitting or hanging out with friends knitting, you know, the like. The last project that you've actually seen progress on are my Coffee Talk socks by Tracy Miller of the Grocery Girls. And this is how much progress I've made not a ton so I was about up here and I have done this much I've maybe four or five more repeats before I do the heel flap gusset and then work on the foot but um, some some progress not a ton but I mean progress on this a lot of progress on that shawl and you'll see some cast-ons because I was just craving it but this this, this is Woolberry Fiber, this many. So that's from Christmas 2018. Why I keep messing that up? This was from last Christmas, Christmas, not the one that just happened. And the yarn is Luna Bud Knits in the Thanatos colorway. And I think you can see it better here. I did purchase this while on site doing an install and I was in somewhere in Kentucky. The stitch marker for this is also from Once Upon a Corgi in the Court of Thorns and Roses advent calendar. Oh, speaking of advent calendars, oh, um, Julie of Sweet Sparrow Knits, her advent calendar goes on sale today. 
I need to see. I totally forgot. It's there. I will have to buy that after I'm done podcasting. I'm really liking those socks. Um, I'm excited to wear them. I think the combination of the blue and the purple is really nice. And blues are not my favorites for wearing. I do like jewel tone blues. This, not normal, but the combination of it and the purple just looks really good. And that is in my fringe field. And um, I do have two pins on it. This guy, which is from The Emperor's New Groove, and this one, which is a Harry Potter uh, reference, but it's it says, she ain't messing with no broke Niffler, Niffler um, which is really funny because that's Gold Digger and Niffler's like shiny things. Um, specifically, this is um, Fantastic Beasts, not... Harry Potter, but you know, I think you know what I mean. Okay, so the rest are new cast-ons. I have them in this big bucket basket thing. This I got at Aldi for like seven dollars or something. They only had this color or else I would have grabbed more, but this is great. Um, this is like perfect for cozy memory blankets or if you just want to throw all of your projects in a bucket, this works amazing. One of the ladies in my knitting group has a pattern coming out and she needed some test knitters. Um, so the pattern is called Fields of Flowers Wrap and it um, should be coming out in April sometime. That's when, um, that's our deadline for finishing it. I'm not far, I am just here. <laughs> but I felt the need to just cast on <clears throat> and have it started. So uh, the wrap is a, it's on the bias and there is like a ribbing texture and then a lace in between. And I am using these two skeins. Oop, down it went. <clears throat> So the one that I'm using right now is Cosmic Strings in her Merino single. Both of them are singles. And this is the colorway Aquarius. Like this, I love this color blue. Like see how shiny it is? Beautiful. So Cosmic Strings is that one. And then this guy is going to be what my lace will be in. And this, relatively new to my co uh, collection, to my stash. This is Fuse Fiber Studios in the persimmon colorway. Actually, is this new? No, I think I bought this in New York. Um... And not with the batch of Fuse Fibers that I purchased. But anyway, um, so Fuse Fibers, she no longer dyes yarn anymore. Isn't this amazing? And there's like a green in here that complements so well with this teal, I think. Plus the orange is, is hot orange and kind of shiny like this is. I thought these looked so cool together. Plus the uh, actual pattern uh, sample knit is, in, is pink and um, some of the other test knitters are also using pink. I don't have a lot of pink yarn to be honest um, and I'm not going to wear a ton of pink so I just thought this would be a really cool contrast and different. I even thought of doing the lace in this color. Um, and the ribbing in this, but I think the lace, it'll be interesting to see the lace in a speckle rather than just the solid. So that is what I'm doing. Um, it's not a secret, so I will be able to show you 
my progress and I'll let you know when the pattern comes out if you are interested in knitting it. And then lastly, what I'm probably the most excited about right now is this. This is my Northeasterly. I've been wanting to cast on a Northeasterly for a while and I just wasn't ever sure what I wanted it to be. I know I'm not going to like mix matched minis, um, so I had bought this gray to kind of tone everything down, so gray and then whatever, gray, whatever, and that was my intention, but then when I started knitting with the minis, this is, this is a, a sport or a DK, and the minis are fingering, and it looked awful with them next to each other, so I, I didn't want to scrap it because I just... I was just really craving this. So, I just picked up some, picked up there in my stash. I did not buy anything. I just grabbed some of the Karen Simply Softs that went together. I had purchased these to make cowls for my friends and then I just never did it. So, at this point, am I going to? I don't think so. So, I'm going to use them for something else. And this is the color scheme that we're going with. So we have this coral color, the lime green, this lightish blue, a tan, and then the main color will be gray. So the main color um, is Bernat, Burnet, Bernat, Bernay. I always called it Bernat. Uh, Bernat Baby Sport, and what's the colorway name? Baby Gray. This is 100% acrylic. It is pretty soft. There is approximately 1,077 yards. So this should def this should be enough for this blanket. So I think the order of what I'm doing, it's going to be gray, color, gray, color, gray, color. So gray, and then this is persimmon, this coral color. Next I will move, then I'll go back to gray, and then I will do bone, gray, limelight, gray, and then lastly, blue mint and then I will go back and repeat that process. I don't know how big I'm gonna make it and I will then need to start um, because I want it to be gray and then a different color so I'm thinking probably the persimmon will be here so it'll almost be like diagonal um, totally not sure yet, but I'm thinking that's probably what I'm going to end up doing. Uh, these I'm knitting on a size 2, and these are my Chiaogu Mini Twists. And I'm really, I'm really liking this. It's just, it's, it is, it's closer to my aesthetic than like a scrappy blanket. <clears throat> Now what I had wanted to do was the gray and then use minis. So I am a Patreon of Molly of a Homespun House and I'm the level where I get three minis every month and I really like that. I, I love watching her vlogs, um, her Christmas uh, Vlogmas is one of my favorites. So I just, I like, it makes sense. Plus minis. So I have nine minis so far. You can't see, I'm just looking down. Um, but here they are. So nine minis so far. And then I do have one wound up because this is what I was going to try and use and it didn't work out. So, um, not sure what I'm going to totally do. I was thinking maybe making some Pixel Rise socks. 
out of these. Not sure. Still haven't made Pixel Rise socks. I've talked about them a couple times um, because I was thinking of doing that with the leftovers from my On the Spice Market shawl, which I really should do something with that too. Because there's quite a bit there. There. So yeah, I've been really enjoying getting the minis. It's, it's just additional fun. Oh, got a, oh, one of the minis has come undone. And that brings us to a novel idea, which is uh, one of the segments where I talk about the books that I have read since the last podcast. And with this, I thought I would also talk about my bullet journal. Isn't it beautiful? I love it. So this is an Archer and Olive bullet journal. It is nice. It is expensive, but it is nice. So it has, I don't know how many pages, but it does have a built-in pocket in the back, which I didn't even realize until last night when I was looking at it. I was like, why are there all these weird pieces of paper back here? But there is a pocket. It does have a, like this book belongs to, haven't filled it out, don't know if I will. And what I use this for is to track my books. I still track them on Goodreads, but there's just something really nice about filling out a bullet journal. So I thought I would just show it to you. On the first page, I have my ranking. And then I only have one statistic right now, which is how many books I've read. So I haven't filled out Mar uh, February's, but I will. I'm woefully behind on my Goodreads goal. And then I do have some um, readathon challenges that I'm trying to do. Huh, I just realized I spelled modern wrong. I wrote moodern. That's cool. <laughs> That's funny. Um, so the first one is, it's the Modern Mrs. Darcy uh, reading challenge. Uh, if you go to modernmrsdarcy.com, she has a, or something like that, she has a blog. She has a, a podcast that I listen to as well. But she has some prompts for the readathon. So I'll just read them off for you, if, you know, just in case you're interested. But it's, Read a book published in the year that you were born. So for me, that's the 90s, uh, which is, that's real easy. I can just pick up Harry Potter. <laughs> um, read a debut novel, which I did already complete. A book recommended by a trusted source, a book by a local author, a book outside your genre comfort zone, a book in translation, a book nominated for an award in 2020. So, um, that I'll probably fill at the end of the year closer. A reread, a classic you didn't read in school. My school did not have us read a lot. So really the only classic that I have read at school is The Scarlet Letter, Hamlet, King Lear, Huckleberry Finn. That's it. That is it. I have read so many more classics because I love to read. Um, so really, reading any classic is going to. Like, we didn't read any Jane Austen books. We read no Bronte books. We... I mean, isn't that kind of sad? Oh, well. Um, and then three books by the same author, and I believe I know which author this was going to be, and that is Sally Thorne, because I've already read one of her books. She, I have another one that I'm going to be reading soon, and then her, th and her third novel comes out sometime this year, so, uh, and it's not like at the end of the year, so I'm thinking of doing Sally Thorne. And then I have the, oh, did I even show you the page? So I try to theme everything with colors. And then I have the Read Harder Challenge, 
which is from Book Riot, which is also a website, podcast. Um, I recommend both. So for the Read Harder Challenge, this one has a lot of prompts and they also have blog posts for each of the prom prompts with suggestions of books that you can read for them. I'm not going to go through this entire challenge because there are so many, but I highly recommend doing this challenge because there are a lot of unique things in here like um, do read a picture book where the human or where the main character is a human that is from a marginalized community read a uh, a horror book from an indie press read a memoir that is from a religious background that is not yours so that's going to be interesting for me because um i hate religion in general um it just irritates me because it people are just always so angry when you don't conform to their religion. So it just, it just irritates me. So, I mean, I'm going to, because that's the prompt and the whole point is to broaden your horizon. So I'll do that. I'm not sure what religion I'll pick. Probably not Christianity, just because I am a white female. Um, well, female doesn't really have anything to do with it because I'm white. So I'm probably going to pick something else. Not totally sure what, but, um, yeah. So yeah, there's a lot of, um, interesting prompts. And then I do this like calendar spread. So if I jump to February's, which looks really good. <clears throat> Here's what February's looks like. So I had bought these stickers and then those are the colors that I pulled. So I draw a calendar and then I mark every day that I read. And then I also write um, the releases that I'm interested in. And then I'm keeping track if I actually do purchase those. Then on the other side, I have a stats page. There, each, each month has a different style of stats because I'm just still working out what I want to track. Um, I had marked for books purchase. I didn't end up buying any books in February, which is great because I'm moving. But anyway, and uh, so then this is kind of what the spreads look like. So I've got the title, a bit of information about the book, and then my thoughts. And I love the little flag that I do. So <clears throat> I did read three books since the last time we chatted. And the first one I'll put there. The first one is Gods of Jade and Shadow by Sylvia Moreno Garcia. This was a historical fiction fantasy mythological book and it was great. I gave it four stars. I really, really liked it. Um, essentially, you are following the main character. She is a young girl. <clears throat> young girl, teenager. I don't remember exactly how old she is, but um, actually I should say she's, she's, a, a, she's a teenager, probably closer to being an adult. And she lives at her family's compound that is a that is run by a patriarch her grandfather um she has to do basically all the chores because her that they, they're she should feel grateful that the family has taken her her and her mom back in after her dad had died so she doesn't really have any friends she's not treated the best uh, she's stubborn, she wants to get out and see the world, and she gets that opportunity when she accidentally awakens a god of Shibalba. And I'm pr I think it's pronounced Shibalba because that is how they pronounce it in Road to El Dorado, which is a DreamWorks movie. Yes, it is definitely going to be whitewashing it, and I hope that they pronounced it correctly because in my mind, I just kept reading Shibalba. So she is trying to help this god become a full-fledged god and a full-fledged ruler again. So you kind of, you know, follow them on their adventures. I really love this book because it's not set in the United States. It is set in the 1920s, but not the roaring 20s, which is different 
I feel like most books that I read that are set in the 20s have to deal with flappers. Nothing wrong with that, but that is pretty much all of the 20s era's books that I ever come across. So you're traveling to these different cities and the author takes the time to explain things about it and um, she'll use the like authentic words or she'll 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 give the name the city a name and then explain that to Americans or to white people this is this city so then you kind of get like the terms and the city names that I'm familiar with um coupled with what they're actually called by the indigenous people that live there really good highly recommended it really liked it very unique um like I said I give it four stars and I'm interested to read other books by this author. The next book I read uh, was an audiobook and it was part of the Read Harder Challenge. It was an audiobook um, written in poetry form, slam poetry. Um, I find that I like those in audio better and the authors tend to read them because poetry can have um, a large impact on the, the way that you not pronounce, but inflect on certain words. So this was the The Long Way Down by Jason Reynolds. And this was about a boy's, a boy's brother is shot and killed because of gang violence and how the rules are when someone in your family is killed, you don't snitch, but you reenact revenge. So you find the person who shot him and then you shoot them. So it's this vicious cycle of war where you're just shooting someone because you think they shot your relative and it it's a cycle. So this book is about the boy riding down an elevator and people that are dead keep getting on the elevator and talking to him. So the whole book spans one minute, but obviously it's it's like like a Christmas Carol style where it's a lot longer, but it really only one minute passes. It was really powerful. And sad. I'm fortunate in that I am not a part of gang violence. No one in my family is, has ever been in a gang, I don't think. It's not my life. It's not part of my day to day. And so reading it was just really sad because it is parts of people's lives and it's part of a lot of people's lives um so I really I recommend it the audiobook was really good and I listened to it in one day I basically I put it on and then I just kept listening to it it was it was that good so I gave that four stars as well and it is a YA book so the last book that I read is called The Hating Game by Sally Thorne this is a romance book and I gave it five stars. Originally I gave it four and then I just kept thinking about it like days later. So I, I bumped it up to five. This book, I, and it's, <laughs> ratings are personal. I'm rating a book based on how I liked it, how I felt about it. And when I read a book, I'm not necessarily always rating it on technicality or how well written was it, but really, did I enjoy it? I, I effing loved this book. And uh, let me just tell you about it. So it is a romance book. There is, um, there is some explicit content in this book. Not a ton, 
but there is so know that going in if you don't like open door romance then don't read this book but you uh, so the hating game is about um a guy and a girl who are assistants to the presidents of a merged publishing house and they hate each other they are vastly different in how they operate and they constantly annoy each other and they play these games basically and it's it's kind of like mental games like you stare at the other person until they flinch and uh, or you um like continuously copy that person until they go crazy or who can get their work done the fastest stuff like that um so just like uber competitiveness and then the company announces that they are hiring for a new president and or it's as a ceo really so there's two ceos and there's going to be a third one and naturally they're both vying for that same position so uh, they it's a hate to love trope which is just my favorite i i love arguing with people <laughs> Not in like an aggressive way, but where you're just like arguing over the stupidest stuff and it's not like in the end you're not going to be mad about it. It's more just like, I guess you could even say it's debating, just debating or constantly throwing out jabs at people. I mean, I get it too. It's, I don't know what it is, but a lot of people like to throw jabs at me and I think it's because I will then reciprocate and then it's a war of war, war of words which is why I love this book so much and the main character I could just like she's I saw bits of myself in her because she would be talking and then randomly go oh my gosh look at that house I want to live there like that is definitely stuff that I do I have multiple conversations happening at once I'll be talking to someone about something and then I'll see like a really cute dog walk by and I'm like, oh dog! And then I continue with my conversation. And I just felt like the main character was like that as well. I really, really liked it. I feel, after I'm finished reading like cutesy books, like I had this exact same feeling when I finished um, You've Got My Number by Sophie Kinsella. And I feel sad that my life isn't as cute as this book. <laughs> so I had a little bit of that, but it was really good. I really recommend it. And I, I think I'm gonna actually go out and buy this book. I read it on my on my Kindle. I tend to read Chiclet on my Kindle um, because it's always so quick and easy to read. Really liked it, big fan. I'm gonna read her other books. Oh, and in case you wanted to know, this is my March spread. My most anticipated book of the month comes out in two days on Tuesday. I pre-ordered it. It should arrive at my house. And that is The Crescent City by Sarah J. Mass. She wrote the A Court of Thorns and Roses trilogy. She also wrote the Throne of, Gr Throne of Glass series. I think there's seven books in that series. And this is a new series that she started. Um, I'm, I think it's in the same world as Throne of, as, um, um, well, actually, no, I'm not totally sure. There's supposed to be three more books in the A Court of Thorns and Roses trilogy, but this is not, like, this is not the fourth book or the next trilogy, but either way, so excited. There's, like, I think it's just short of 900 pages. I love hunky books like that. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm also seeing Cassandra Clare on Wednesday. I got tickets to a book signing in Dayton and uh, to my best friend and one of her friends are coming down. So we're getting the brand new book, Chain of Gold and we can bring another book to have it signed. Not sure which I'm gonna have signed. I'm thinking Queen of Darkness or um, one of the Eternal Devices books. I haven't made up my mind yet, but 
I guess we're essentially at the life segment. So um, if you're new, welcome. If you're not new, I'm packing, packing up my life still. It looks like I'm not getting anywhere, but I probably have 20 boxes just piled up against the wall over there. So I need to do some more boxes. <sighs> this, uh, yesterday I helped one of my friends move and it was kind of funny because one of my best friends that is in Dayton, he uh, was saying how he has, he was help, you know, he came to help move and then next weekend he's helping um, his best friend move. And I was like, well, in three weeks I'm moving, so are you gonna come help me? So it's kind of funny, a lot of people are moving right now. But they moved into a really nice apartment. It kind of, honestly, it reminds me of a of a um, a condo. It's open floor, like kitchen, living room, and then there was like a little den in the back, and it had an attached two car two car garage, and the price was really good. I'm actually pretty jealous of it, but I mean. I'm leaving Dayton, so, and if I don't want to have to pay for parking, additionally on top of my apartment, so that's why I'm moving so close to where I work, because otherwise um, I would have to pay for parking, but yeah. So that's what I did yesterday, I moved, I went grocery shopping, and then I, oh, I watched part of Fruits Baskets. So Fruits Baskets is a manga that had an anime reboot last year. So there is an anime that came out in the late 2000s. And for whatever reason, they never finished the series. It just ended. Um, it ended like halfway through the manga. So I'm hoping that the 2019 version completes the manga series. Um, I'm really liking it. The art is really beautiful. Um, at first I was watching, I was like, this is kind of like the same, but then I looked at some stills between the current version or new version and the old version and it's really nice. The old version's not bad, but the new version is even more detailed. And it's funnier than I remember. <laughs> just like some of the things that they just shout at each other. I love when characters have this like deadpan comments and like someone will be just worked up and the other person's like go home and like they're, it's like it's so funny but no one like they're not laughing i love that so if you like anime um the new fruits basket is really nice i also started watching um something called what is it the monster no the wallflower and this is also a manga that I had read. I don't remember finishing the series, but I saw it on Hulu and I was like, this looks familiar. And I will say it's definitely more of like a screaming uh, anime. Like all the characters are constantly screaming, which is kind of annoying, but it also has some of the dead, like deadpan comments. Um, the main character is this like really creepy macabre girl and she of course anime is always like bizarre but so she lives in this mansion with four dudes and the dudes they're like um they're supposed to be transforming her into like a lady of society and she's just real freaking weird so it's funny. It says it's for mature audiences, which I don't know, like there were some really weird scenes where she's like cutting fish and it's like really bloody and it looks like a murder scene. But other than that, it hasn't really been, oh, okay, you know what? I think, so the characters have said the F word twice, but it's always like they say, oh, fa, and then like there's a noise that kind of stops it. So they never say the CK portion. So I wonder if that's what the mature rating is for. Um, but otherwise, I don't know. It it doesn't really seem like it should like it's mature. But maybe it gets more explicit later on. I don't know. Um, the the chopping up of the fish was probably like the grossest scene yet because there was just like 
blood ever. She's like wiping blood from her face. I was like, wow, this is really creepy. But yeah. Um, oh, I did go to a concert. So my friend, um, the wedding that I was in, the bag, uh, her her brother-in-law is the lead singer of a band called Harbor. So uh, we went and saw them perform. I have seen them before ages ago and they're really good. Um, if you like, she calls them, what is she? Like beach bop. I would put them in the pop punk uh, category, um, which is funny because she doesn't listen to pop punk. I listen to pop punk. Um, also funny when she had introduced me when she had invited me the very first time to go see them she's like I think you'll like them because it's definitely your style of music and yeah it is my style of music so it's called Harbor and they have several albums out you can listen to them all on Spotify but um, also playing or mouth movements and um, Call the Spirit of the Bear. I really liked Spirit of the Bear. Um, so yeah, if you are interested in new music, check them out. Um, recommend them. The concerts were pretty good. It was a small crowd. A lot of young underaged, like you could see the X's on their hand. And um, I was having a weird week. So I I would have had more fun if I had gone to that concert the week before because I was in a funk. I was in a mood. So I was just, I was anxious and I'm normally not an, I don't get anxious. I don't get stressed. So it was very weird and it lasted, it lasted essentially two weeks of me just like my stomach was hurting with how anxious I was. That about sums up the podcast. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I normally don't do the whole spiel like a lot of people do. Like if you're a new year, welcome. If you're returning, thank you. I don't know, I feel like it's a given, but just know I appreciate you watching. Um, if you'd like to follow me on social media, my Instagram is a traveling knitter podcast. We have a Ravelry group and it just search a traveling knitter. And my actual Ravelry user name is Lulu is crazy. Oh, I forgot to talk about I well, I'll just mention it. I've been so into playing my Xbox. So I'm, I'm excited for the next generation. Pretty pumped, pretty pumped for it. Okay. Tangent over. Uh, Goodreads, I am Lulu is crazy on there as well. If you would like to follow me on Goodreads, I am very active. I read a lot of books. I add a lot of books to my um, to be read TBR shelf. So if you're ever in need of book recommendations, um, let me know. I love talking about books. Honestly, I think I like talking about books more than I like talking about knitting. Uh, if you ever have any questions, let me know. Just stick them down there or shoot me a message on any of the social medias that I mentioned. Um, Ravelry, Instagram, Goodreads. Um, but otherwise, that's it for today. And I will see you guys later. Bye.